Am I on there? Good evening. Good evening. As Pastor Moses said, I'm so glad to be here with you today. Uh, he's in Chicago. I told them that they should take their jackets with them. Uh, I have relatives and I've lived in Chicago, so I told them it's getting cold. But uh, we thank God for what he's doing uh, up there with them and what he's doing here. Uh, it is certainly my pleasure to be here along with my wife, Linda, and to share the word with you. And I've been talking to, you, to uh, Moses, and we've been talking about the direction that God is leading him to lead you. And he's been talking from the book of Luke, and he's been talking about uh, being knowing Christ and being like him. Knowing Christ and being like him. And so he said, hey, man, you can go in the book of Luke or you whatever, whatever God gives you. Well, I am going to do the book of a uh, part of the book of Luke, but I'm also going to do an Old Testament scripture. You see, as I begin to pray and, and say, God, what is it? Give me the word for your people. And uh, so sometimes I say, OK, God, you want me to go here, maybe there. And then, you know, some when I sit still, God, I say, OK, this is what you do. So now I got it. Father, we thank you and praise you for this great time together. We praise you and thank you for the leadership of this uh, sanctuary, this church, this body, and we thank you for giving them traveling mercies, and Lord, we ask that you pour out and bless them while they're in Chicago, and Lord, as they come back, let them come back on fire. Set us a fire, Lord, that we can do your thing in the earth, that we begin to long to see people saved for Christ, long to see the church have revival. We just love you, Lord. We trust you. We give you all that we are and all that we have. It's already yours anyway, Lord. So we surrender to you. In the name of Jesus Amen. and God's saints said, Amen. Amen. Now, tonight I just want to share with you briefly. I said that there was some, uh, the book of Luke and uh, there's another scripture I'll go to later. So I, uh, let's go, if you will, with me to the book of Luke chapter 15. Uh, you're going to move that gator hat while I'm preaching, right? I'm just kidding. No, no, no. You, you're good. <laughs> you're good. You're good. Thank you. Oh, okay, good. Got the podium for me. So tonight I want to talk to you about a couple of situations. As we, as we strive to know more about Jesus in order for us to be more like Jesus, I want to share some scripture with you that really, has, uh, if you got 100, lose one, you'll leave the 99 and go get the one. Because that one is important. Everyone's important. He said, but that one's lost. Won't that one back? Are you with me? Yes. See, see, he's saying it's so important that I get that one back. And he started using parables because they understood sheep. And, you know, there were a lot of sheep herding. And so they understood that. But so he was talking about when one is lost. Luke chapter 15, verse 10, and I'll be using the. New King James, bear with me, please. Likewise, I said to you, there is joy. This is verse 10, 15, 10. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Over one sinner who, who repents. We're the church, his bride, right? We, we, we're, Lord, we want to be your body, your, your church. Okay, God, what do you want us to do? I want you to go in, 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 in all the earth and preach the gospel, share the gospel. This gospel means what? Good news. Amen. This good news of salvation. He said, go do it. And he said, listen, when, 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 you, when we do that, people are going to come to know Christ. He says, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. And all these years as I've been pastoring and preaching and then, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. By his Holy Spirit, I've been preaching the word and God just, oh, he poured out. He helped me to see it. 20 years. But you know what's funny? God is beginning to show it to me from a different, ang different angle. From a different angle. What you mean, preacher? Go, bear with me just a little bit. So 15. He says in verse uh, 11, then he said a certain man had two sons. Now, a lot of times if you've been in church uh, uh, 20 years, uh, like I have, in preaching 20, you, you kind of know these scriptures. Sometimes you don't know exactly where it is, but, but you know, oh, I heard that story before. But see, it hit me a little different this time. It hit me really different. 
Uh, I think last time I preached it was about uh, parents understanding your kids may stray, but glory to God, you, go, you, you keep praying until they return. But this time, whoo, glory. As, as we look at it this time, God showed me something different. Let me read on and then I'll come back. So he said in verse 11, then say a certain man had, had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided them his livelihood. I tell you the truth. I had some friends when they said, man, that Theo Bob get more out of a scripture than, than anybody I've ever seen. But he said the young one came. The man had two sons. The young one came to him and said, give me my portion of my inheritance that I get when you die. Well, the problem is, that ain't dead yet. So he's really saying to his father, I wish you die so I can get my money or whatever it is. Can you imagine as a parent? Uh, uh, mom and dad, uh, I, 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 I see that you guys took out some extra insurance. Uh, uh, you think maybe I can call Mutual of Omaha tomorrow and collect that? So it sends a message to the father that, hey, I want my stuff now. Don't care what happened to you. See, all of that is in verse. Do you see all that in verse one? Yes. <laughs> all of that is in verse one. And of course, if you had to amplify it, it'd do that too. But, but watch what it says. It says, give me my stuff now. Give me the portion of goods that falls to me. It said, and, and what's crazy is, the father did it. Any of your kids ever ask you something? You say, what? Are you out of your mind? There's no way I'm going to do that. Not no, but heck no. <laughs> Not going to happen. But the father did it. He did it. Oh, help me, church. I mean, it's hard to visualize Mm. See, for, uh, scripture come to life, come to life to me when I'm studying scripture. It's like it's like me and God. Man, God's talking to me. He says, uh, "See you in here. I want you to see yourself." And that's why he tell me more now. In 20 years of preaching, he said, I, "I don't want you to just be able to preach this. I want you to see yourself in here." I said, "No problem. I can do that, Lord. By your Holy Spirit, I'll do it just as you say." But watch what happens. He says, in not many days after the father had given it to him, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far place, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal, prodigal, pro, pa, prodigal living. What I mean? He was wild. He took whatever his father had worked very diligently to build up, to, to save, to, to sacrifice, uh, so that when his children, uh, when he's gone, his children have something. And this young man took his portion and went and parted and blew it all. He blew it all. Now, I don't know about you. First of all, if I was, if I was father, I'd say, hey, ain't going to happen. Secondly, if he went and spent that, oh, let me go. because you see, the father knew what he was going to do already. <laughs> God knows what you and I are going to do before we do it, before we think it. See, what happens with us, oh, what an idea. God said, yeah, I had that. I knew that before you were born. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you were going to do that. Prodigal. He just, he's just straying away, straying away. Straight away. See, this is why we, we want to see people who are lost come to Christ. Because we know when they come to Christ, they'll have eternal life. They'll have everything better than the stuff that we have. I don't know about you, but I like stuff. I like my stuff with wheels, too. <laughs> but he, want, he, he wants to understand that, listen, far greater is this salvation than anything else. And when one is lost, we ought to grieve, hunger to see them saved. 
See, the old church, they used to say, oh, man, they would just pray and they'd be, oh, God, send somebody. Lord, if there's anybody here today who does not know Jesus, who never surrendered their heart, draw them unto you, Lord. That's what we come for. And, and we also come across to fire up the saints. Why? We want revival even in the church. But let me go on. He didn't say all that in there, but let me, let me move. <laughs> Somebody said, man, that, that, I heard about that PB. Pastor Bob, how, how long he preach? Oh, long time. <laughs> Not really. I, I preach until the Holy Spirit said cut, then I'm, I'm done. <laughs> so pray, Holy Spirit, have your way. Come, Lord Jesus, speak your word. So, he went and joined himself, verse 15, to citizens of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. Now, what happened is this young man, I don't know how he was, has spent all of this inheritance that his daddy had given him that he shouldn't have given him, but he did because what? Love. Sometimes we give our kids stuff out of love. We know it's not necessarily the best one. Out of love. So, when this boy get all of his, his, his inheritance, he goes off to this far country and said, and boy, he had fun, he had fun, he, he parted, parted harder, he did everything, until he didn't have any money anymore. So now he's got to ask somebody for a job. Bad word. Job. So now, he's going to get the job. I'll speed it up in a minute. Mm -hmm. He had spent it all and said a famine had come in the land where he was. I think he took the problem with him. Okay, you hear me? He journeyed to this far land. He didn't say nothing. There were a famine before he got there. He took the problem with it. You ever see people get mad? They say, I ain't going to that church no more. I'm going to go over there. They take the problem with it. Or don't you come up in here and you're going to have some problems. You, you better go fix it over there before you come here. Don't bring it. He brought the problems over there, not them people. He done, he done gone broke and now he got them people over there starving. Wow, man. Woo, here he comes. He, he's starving. Now he got to get him a job. All right. So when he has spent all, uh, uh, there arose that famine in 14. I'm going back to recap. And began to be in want. Then he went and journeyed, and joined, excuse me, uh, himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his field to feed pigs. Swine. Pigs. Are y'all hearing me? Yes. Now, one thing I learned by Moses early on, he's a Jewish boy. <laughs> I learned so much from him, man, I tell you. Uh, I read, uh, uh, reading the Bible, study the Bible, and then preach all the year. Well, I get Moses, man, it come to life. The Jewish people didn't like pig. They didn't eat, they didn't do the pig thing. Y'all, are y'all with me? Yes. They didn't do that. They didn't do the pig thing. The, mm. So it said he went and he joined himself. He worked in this man's field and worked, worked with the man's pigs. Yes. And it goes on to say he, he ended up eating what the pigs eating. That's how it goes. You know, when I was growing up around here, we picked oranges in Central Florida, what we did. And if your family didn't have, and you didn't have any money to buy or take lunch with you, we did what we call you eat an orange sandwich. You in Orange Grove? Eat some oranges. He working with the pigs? Eating what the pigs eat. You said, man, how? Eating. I, you said, I'll know. Man, you don't know what you'll do if you get hungry enough. Are y'all hearing me? And I was in the army. We used to, we find something in the field to eat. If you didn't have rations, find something. <coughs> Help me, Holy Spirit. I do. Uh, if you bear with, uh, I'm, I'm endeavoring to take my time. See, uh, where I've, when I pastor the, the churches I've pastored and preached before, folks will know I'm attention. Uh, they know I'm attention deficit. They, so what they do, they will remind me what scripture I was on. <laughs> hint, hint. Okay, verse 16, and, and he said, listen, uh, uh, he went into the field uh, to feed the swine, and, and he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the, uh, uh, the swine ate, and no one gave him anything else. No one gave him anything. Had everything, had it made at home with his father, 
Now he's out here eating with pigs. Yeah, some people say, yeah, serves him right. Hard-headed. But this is what happened to him. He said, but when he came to himself, he said, he shook himself. said, man, what in the world? See, sometimes, I, you know, sometimes we got to shake ourselves. Up. What am I doing? Sometimes the Holy Spirit needs to smite us. Do me like that all the time. I don't know about you. Yeah. He come to your senses. He came to his senses. He out with pigs. Jewish, Jewish people don't do pigs. And he out there eating and sleeping with swine. All of his life they've taught, boy, you stay away from that. That's not, uh-uh. And here he is. So he came to his senses, and watch what happened. He came to himself in verse 17, and he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to eat and to spare, and, and I perish with hunger? I'm out here hungry, and my father has, has everything, including his servants live and eat better than I'm eating now. Man, what's wrong with this picture? <laughs> I'm glad he came to his senses. Mm-mm. Verse 18, he said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to get up, I'm going to rise and go to my father and, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. Are you hearing me? Yes. God, God allowed him to get to a point where he had to say, I did a foolish thing. Now the father that he earlier th wished was dead, he's glad. He, wait a minute, I can go, I can... I, I can go back home. I can go back home. My father's servants. He, uh, he said, I'm going to get up and go. Here we go. He gets up and jumps on the Greyhound. Watch what he says. Or the Amtrak or whatever it is. You may have flown. I don't like flying. That's why I ain't go to Chicago or Mosul. I don't do flying. Amen. That's a, one of the other things. I got these quirky things about me. One, one of them is that I hate airplanes. They said, man, come go with us. I'm not going. Mm -hmm. No extra charge for that. I just threw it in. <laughs> he says, so he said, I'll rise and go to my father. Now what happened? And, and he said, because I've sinned against heaven and I've sinned uh, before, before you, Father. Why? Because I've been ungrateful. I did not recognize and realize. I took for granted all that my father and all that God has done for me and all that he has provided. I have taken it for granted. He came to his senses. Lord Jesus, I wish our young people, a lot more of them, will come to their senses. You know, we do all we can for them. We provide everything, and it's just not good enough. And then they have to go out into the world to find out you can be with swines. When your mom and daddy was trying to help you. Yes. Are y'all hearing me? I had to step forward a little bit, but look at him. Our kids, we, we, we give them everything we got. And then they're like, oh, well, that ain't nothing, you know, mom and dad. You, know, you just want to boss me. You just want to rule. And they get out there. Get them. <laughs> so, so what happens is, amen. And, and I can preach like this because I, yeah, I tell people what I preach. For, for 20 years, I've experienced it. God showed me the word, and he showed me how to apply it. But your kids... I tell people there are four things that can break your heart. There are four things that will break your heart. Love. Football. Your kids. And politics. Those four things will break your heart. Now, in this case, kids are, your kids are number two, but we know how they target. They got our hearts. And they don't always appreciate how much we love them. Okay, so I'm going to flip this thing in a minute. I want you all to see where I'm going with this because we want to see Jesus for who he is. We want to be like him. And see, what we got to be able to see is where we fit in the scripture. See, I, I always thought I fit in the scripture because I could preach it by the Holy Spirit. God showed me something. He says, you like the prodigal son. Oh, God. Oh, Lord, I'm I'm a Christian, Lord. I'm a good Christian. You like the prodigal. See, see, we have to see ourselves. Right. You understand? It's easy to see it from somebody else. It's hard if you see it from the father's perspective. But think about it. If when we begin to see ourselves as the one that walked away from God, woo, 
church. See, when we, when we do that, we come to our senses and we begin, to, we begin to seek God like never before. We begin, or like when we first found, when we first came to the Lord. We go back to it. We go back to it. God allowed us to get to that point and he said, I gotta, I'm going back. I'm going back to my, my father's house. I'm going back to where I first came to Jesus. I'm going back to when I used to pray and fast and, and I used to seek God's face before I did anything. I want to go back there. I want to go back. I've had enough of this world stuff. It's beat me up, beat me down. I, I can't take it. I need to go back. Okay, I'm going to speed up. I'm almost there now. Mmm, amen. Ha, ah, there we go. <laughs> Thank you, brother. But in 19 first, he said, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. He, he says what he, he's rehearsing his speech to his father. Make me like one of your hired servants. And so he rose. As he rose and came to his senses. And he rose to go to his father. But when he was still a great way off. Oh, Lord, this was always my favorite part. When he was a great way off. Mm, somebody with glasses going to understand this in a minute. And say, when he was a way off, his father saw him. Woo! And he said he had compassion. Had compassion, but he ran to him, fell on his neck, and kissed him. He said, that look like my boy. God, I've been praying day and night. Don't know what, what Lord, you know, I've been, Lord, I've just been praying. I miss my child. I don't know what's going on. But God, I prayed over him when he was a baby. I prayed over him all his life. I prayed on him when he left, oh God. I'm going to just sit by this window and watch him for weeks, for days, for weeks, months. He's waiting. And all of a sudden, it looks like my boy. That looks like my boy. That is my boy. Come here, son. And he just hugged him, loved on him. Lo notice what he didn't do. Oh, glory to God. Well, I want to show you what he didn't do. Watch what he said. When he saw him away off. And he, his son said to him, Father, I've, I've sinned against you. I've sinned against heaven and I've sinned in your sight. And, and, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it. And let us eat and be merry for this my son was dead and now he's alive again. The father didn't fuss. The father, boy I told you. You know our kids don't want to ever hear us say that. Damn. I told Boy, you sure were saying inside, I'm saying, you, you told him that. Told him a year or two ago. But the father didn't do that. He fell on that boy's neck, kissed that boy, and said, son, welcome home. Amen. When we mess up, when we, when we go out there, and we, we're not all God has called us to be, and, and we've fallen in all kinds of situations. You know what he says? I was just waiting for you to come back. I've been longing for you. To return. Been longing for you to return. See, all these years, I preached that thing. I saw it from the father's perspective. I saw it from the older brother's perspective. We ain't going to even go into that. But, but now I see it from that prodigal son's perspective. Are you hearing me? Yeah, see, see, we have to understand God's love for us. I tell people all the time, I have learned so much about God's love for me through my children. God crazy loves us. I mean crazy in love with us. We mess up, he welcomes us back. We mess up, he welcomes us back. And people say, well, I'm a good Christian. I don't mess up. Okay. <laughs> you, oh, oh, you going on to be the Lord now? Okay, yeah, good. You ain't messing up no more. <laughs> but the father didn't yell at him. Didn't say I, he welcomed him with open arms. I want us tonight, saints, to understand, just put yourself in the place of that prodigal son. See, because if we're not there, we know that there are people who are. 
So what we want to do is we want to see them come to Christ just like that boy come home. We want to see them come to Christ. Our desire is to see our community come to Christ. See, that's what, that's what we have a common bond. See, that's why Moses and I are brothers. We have a common bond. It is to see people of all kind come to Christ. That's the deal. I'm going to have to close here in a minute because I've gone too far already. I, I, I'm, I'm going to have to hold off on the other scripture, Hosea. I'll do this. I'll tempt you with it. I'll say, you go and read Hosea beginning at the first chapter. Because see, Hosea, the prophet, God told him to go marry a, a prostitute. Huh? Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Now. And then, let me get this right. I'm going to be brief. He said in Hosea 1, and I'm going to give you enough to just make you want to go home and tear it up. He says, my prophet, I want you to go and marry a prostitute. Now, how many of y'all raising sons? And you want to say to your son, well, listen, son, uh, I invested a lot in you. About that age now, I know you, you know, you're almost old enough to get married. So here's what I want you to do, son. I want you to go find a prostitute. Now, you ain't going to find many in Lake County. You have to go on Blossom Trail somewhere. I mean, I don't, I, ain't, I don't know now. I just said what they told me. But can you imagine? The Lord said to his servant, go, go get this prostitute and marry her. In all these years, I love to preach on that scripture because I could see it. I, I said, God, don't, don't ever do me like that, man. <laughs> look here, God. <laughs> you done done some stuff to me now. now. Yeah, okay, you, you God. But, but look here, don't do that to me. In all these years, I saw it from Hosea's standpoint. I think I even seen it from, from God's stand, standpoint. But when I saw it from the prostitute which he married, her name was Gomer. When I began to see it from Gomer's viewpoint, she was a prostitute. She was bad. She had done everything wrong, but God told that boy, he said, listen, not only you, you marry her, and she have these children from all over the place. He said, now after all this happened, you go get her back. Go buy her back. How y'all hear me? He said, go buy her back. What? She done. Go buy her back. See, that's where we are. God had to buy us back. Yeah. He paid a price to buy us back. We were on our way to hell and deserved it, but God bought us back. Amen. Just like that prodigal, he said, come on home. I love you. And just like Gomer, all the filth and all the stuff she done, that husband welcomed her back. God said, I'm telling you to do this so my people can see how I feel about them. Why do we want to see people come to Christ? Because we know the love of God and what he's done in us. Yes. We know what he has brought us from. Yes. We know that we know. So we all be on fire Amen. to see that prodigal come back, to, to, to see that, that prostitute be saved. I love it. That sign you said, Moses had that scumbags welcome. Oh, Jesus. I didn't know him then. I just thought he was a crazy man. <laughs> scumbags welcome. He said, because God said, I can take a scumbag and make him my child. I can take a scumbag and clean him up. I can take a scumbag and use him. I can take a scumbag and make him royalty. Hallelujah. Only our Lord can do that. I want to encourage this church. I want to encourage you. You guys on that path, I see the fire in you. Continue. They have that hunger and thirst to see people saved. See, that's how revival comes. We, you know, we, we ain't just, oh, I'm just going to church. No, we're the church. We are the church. Amen. We are the church. And, and guess what? We come, we get fired up. The Holy Spirit put that word in us and we go, oh, yes, I, I see it, Lord. I see it. I want to see people saved and I know you do I know you do so I want to encourage you think about it how God saved us a wretched man like me a wretched no good person like me should have died long before but God said not so I've been up here a long time but may I just one more may I share just one brief story with you I was a captain in the Army, and I lived all over the United States. And 
One of the places I lived was uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, just north of Chicago. And I worked with reserve, Army Reserve units. And one night I happened to go into a grocery store. See, back then we didn't have ATMs. And so I would go in the grocery store to write a check so I can get money to go bowling. Now, I want you to understand something. This is before I came to Christ. Are you hearing me? See, before I came to Christ, see, <laughs> You know, what I, you know what I was before I came to Christ? A sinner. We look at people and say, oh, look at them sinners. That's what sinners do. I went to the store to get uh, cash a check so I can uh, go bowling. And uh, during that time, I was married to my first wife who had leukemia. Uh, Y'all hear me now? So we, we got to see ourselves in this. Thing. I was, my first wife, I married out of college. She had leukemia. She was in the hospital. I went to the store to cash a check so I can go bowling and my girlfriend was in the car. Oh, preacher, you can't be. Yeah, okay. Like that boy over in that pig, pig place? I understand that. Like Gomer? I, I understand that. I understand that side. Are you hearing me? And so, long story short, they came, somebody came in the store and they robbed the store. And it was a couple of guys, and I saw one guy, I looked him right in the face. I'm like, man. Pushed the cashier, and I saw this big gun. Must have been 357 man. But they pushed her in there. They robbed, he robbed the bank. I thought he robbed the bank. I saw it going down, so I eased back like this with my tactical mind itself, military. Stepped off, went down the aisle, took off. I said, all I got to do is get out. An emergency exit, call the police. Call the police. You can't stand here too long. I got stuck in the meat department. There ain't no exit from the meat department. God, man. I said, I tell you what, then, okay, tactically, I'm, hey, I think this stuff through. I'm going to just hide until the police come because our robber can't stand alone. So I'm going to hide. So I, I, I hid behind some boxes, climbed up one shelf, hid behind the box. I was good. They weren't going to find me. And when the police, when I hear the, the police radio and stuff, I'm going to, so true enough, after I, heard, I heard, ooh, I heard the radio. And they came, they came to the back of the store. I said, man, I'm so glad. They said, freeze. <laughs> huh? See, y'all think they just start shooting black people. <laughs> Almost got it that night. They had six revolvers pointed at my head. I'm going, man. I'm thinking, what did I do? If they had shot and killed me, because he went to the cashier store, well, hey, it was some black guys robbed the store. I saw a black guy run to the back. If they had killed me that night, the next day it would have been big headlines police shoot. Army captain, innocent man. But I want to say this to you. They didn't. We, we, we got it straightened out eventually. They apologized profusely. But think about it just for that moment. I was not saved. I did not know the Lord. I was a sinner. And I was, as Paul said, chief of the sinners. Yet God gave me a calm to just stand there. Not twitch, not make a move or sound. Of course, they had me to jump down and they figure out later who I was and apologize. But I want you to know this, that that was 1985 or 86, and I want you to know this. I should have died that night. But God had a plan. God had a plan. He said, no, not so. I know your life, boy. I know what I'm going to do. Not so. Should have died that night. Apart from Christ. We don't know what people are going through. We don't know who, we don't know whose number is up next, as I said. But we want to bring what? We want to lead them to Christ before they die. I should have died that night. But glory be to God. He said, not so. I'm going to clean you up. Like the boy with the I'm going to clean you up and I'm going to use you. Thank you, Lord. God, we bless you. We praise your name tonight, Lord. We glorify you, God, because you're so worthy. We honor you, Lord, because...
So many times we could have died not knowing you. So many times we could have perished in our sin. So many times, oh God, the enemy had us. He had us, Lord. He had us. But you said not so. I deserved to die that night, Lord. And many other times, I, I deserved it, Lord. I had worked hard. I had earned my ticket to hell because I, I had done it and I deserved to die. But Lord, you said not so. You said, no, I'm going to preserve you, boy, because I've got a plan for you. There's so many out there. They're sinning because that's what sinners do. Our job is to draw them to Christ so that they'll come to know and love the Savior, that they may have eternal life. Father, if there's anyone here tonight who's never made Jesus Lord of their life, Lord, if, if there's anybody who just don't know the greatness of salvation, that God, you, you through your son Jesus, you paid the price for everything. Oh, Lord, everything, everything I had done, Lord, I, I just never felt anything like that. I'd never known anything like that, God. But when you called, when you spoke to my heart, I ran down the aisle. So, Lord, if there's anybody here tonight never made Jesus Lord of their lives, speak to them now, Lord, draw them, that we may pray with them afterwards. Share the gospel of Jesus with them. Remind them of how much God loves us. And Lord, I just so thank you. I so thank you that you took my old wretched life and you cleaned it up, Lord. You cleaned me. You cleansed me with the blood of Jesus. And then, Lord, you called me to be <laughs> your servant, to speak your word. You called me to be one of those in the body of Christ who will go out and draw others to you. Thank you, Lord. I, pr I thank you so much for all that you've done, God, and all that you continue to do in the body of Christ. Bless these, your people, Lord. Keep the fire in us, Lord, to, have this, to lead the lost to Christ. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.